what's going on YouTube. So WWDC was today. I saw the whole entire thing and was impressed with a whole lot. This video, I'm going to talk about the five things that I'm probably most excited about. So uh, interesting note before I get into that. Right after I finished watching the keynote today, I fell asleep. I woke up and there were two cracks in my screen. Absolutely no idea how that happened. I slept on it. I, I don't know. You got any type of ideas as to how that happened, let me know. Anyway, let's get started. Number five. <clears throat> I'm putting this on the list because I was very much impressed with it, even though I probably won't utilize it myself. But still, I thought it was an awesome idea. And that's with the Apple Arcade. The fact that the Apple Arcade is going to have support for the Xbox One controller and the PlayStation 4 DualShock controller. Thought that was a very smart move, way smarter than trying to, I don't know, come up with your own controller. I don't know. You can do that. It's happened before, but... um. If you wanted to look at pretty much two of the best controllers that you can get for a system, just comfortable, out of complete comfort, it would be the PlayStation 4 controller or the Xbox One controller. Both of them excellent controllers. Very smart for them to allow support for that. But that being said, if you own an Xbox One controller, you probably own an Xbox One. Same deal with the DualShock controller. And are you really going to be interested in Apple Arcade if you have either of those systems? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that works out. Would you be interested in buying these controllers at 60, 70 bucks? Would you buy a controller like that just for Apple Arcade? All right, leave that. If that's the case, let me know. I, I'm curious who would do that. But uh, that's my number five. Number four performance. Uh, this is at the lower side of the list because the iPhone already performs very good. I've never had any complaints, but for them to tell even faster app uh, loads, even faster Face ID unlock, things like that, I'm all for it. So I think it's awesome when they can, uh, on the software side, you know, utilize some of that hardware, some of that processing power to just make things a little bit faster. I probably won't be able to tell the difference, but the fact that it's there is cool. Uh, smaller downloads for your apps in the App Store. I think that's an awesome idea. One thing I just remembered, because yesterday I was talking about I couldn't think of any type of complaints for the iPhone. This is my one complaint. When you download something, or specifically when you have to update an app from the App Store, I, the iPod, I'm about to call it the iPod. The iPhone does this thing where if it's over, I think 150 megabytes, it will not let you download it over cellular and instead forces you to connect to a Wi Fi signal. I understand the reasoning behind that because, you know, they, they don't want you to waste your cellular. They don't want you to spend extra money on cellular when people have data caps and stuff like that. Here's the thing. I have Verizon. I have Unlimited. I don't care about data caps. If I want my app updated, let me update it over cellular. There's this whole thing in the options menu that supposedly lets you do that. But even if you toggle it on or off, it will still not download certain apps over cellular. I have that much of a problem because my home Wi-Fi is terrible. If I'm anywhere else, I could latch on to the Xfinity Wi-Fi and I'm fine. But downloading updates for my phone over my home Wi-Fi, terrible. Let me do cellular. I have no data caps. So just let me use it. Okay. But anyway, that's enough of that. Number three. This uh is a feature that I used to love using when I had an Android phone. So glad it's coming over to the iOS. And that's the swipe keyboard. Now, you can download custom keyboards on iOS devices. I've had the uh, Google keyboard on my iPad for some time now. Never really got a custom keyboard for the iPhone. I just kind of got used to using the regular one. 
I think for the convenience of being able to use the emojis and stuff without having to go through a whole bunch of extra hassle. But the fact that the swipe keyboard will natively be on the iPad will make me want to use it, iPad, iPhone, both of them, but it'll make me want to use it even more. So looking forward to that. It's a very, very, if you've never used it, it's you can get used to it very quickly. And to me, it is a speed difference once you get used to it and being able to quickly swipe and type something out versus the uh, classic way. Plus, it's very easy to use with like one hand, thumb wires, one thumb to do it. So very cool feature that I'm looking forward to. You would think that through this entire um, keynote, the only thing that impressed me was iOS stuff. And they did talk about, you know, Apple Watch, which I really don't care about. And the stuff they talked about for the uh, Mac OS really didn't impress me that much either. But I was very much impressed that they separated iOS as far as the iPad and the iPhone. And so what I'm really looking forward to now is the improvements that they made to iPad OS. The multitasking looks like it's way better. The split screen, way better. Uh, the widgets, you can have the widgets on the home screen versus having to swipe to the left and then they only temporarily being there. Very much impressed with that. A lot of other stuff. So the iPad OS in general, very much looking forward to. Big thing. Looking forward to that. That's my number two. Definitely want to get that when it comes out. The number one thing that I was impressed with through this keynote and of course, if you saw my video yesterday, you know I was expecting it. And that is dark mode. Looks great. I never talk about, people would say, okay, it's it's an aesthetic look. It's also pretty much good on battery life, especially if you have the OLED screens on the iPad XS Max, the uh, XS or 10S. I always say it some weird way and get corrected. But anyway, OLED screens benefit a lot from dark themes. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Lots of benefits. Looks great. looks great in messaging. If you wanted to kind of get an idea of what it would look like now, you can always look at the Messenger app in Facebook and go into dark mode for that. It's a bit of an Easter egg to do it, but um, I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. I'm not even going to go into it in this video, but dark mode. Definitely looks good. Looks good in the mail app. Looks good in the calendar app. I'm I'm ready for it. I'm I'm ready. I'm ready to make that a permanent option that's toggled on my phone. They didn't just go into invert mode, so you can see that it was smartly made. And um, I feel like I'm losing my voice. And yeah, definitely looking forward to that. And that about does it for what I'm going to talk about in this video. So, of course, it's a little bit longer than some of my other videos, and of course, you know why. But this is my first top five of the year. I'm pretty certain that that's the case. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and put that in the books, that it took over 150 videos for me to do my first top five. And I originally wanted to do, like, one every week. But here it is. So... When can I expect these changes? Well, definitely not today, unless I'm a developer. And in order to be a developer, I would have to put $99 out, which I am almost certain people are doing so that they can be the first ones to cover iOS 13. And um, yeah, if I had maybe a couple thousand subscribers, I'd put $100 out so that you could see what it looks like first. But uh I'm going to wait till July when the public beta is out. Last year, I did have the developer's preview, and uh, people were scared. Oh, it's going to be a whole bunch of bugs and stuff like that. The only issue I ran into was that I couldn't play Fortnite for a couple months on my phone because it was not compatible with the beta. If I had a developer's preview, would I download it now? Probably, even though I'm hearing that it is having some issues. And as a general rule of thumb, it's not very smart to put the uh, developer's beta, even the public beta, it's risky to put that on the main phone that you're using. 
But I'm used to that kind of stuff because I've, I used to root Android phones and I could go a couple of days not having even telephone services from just making a mistake or two or downloading a, uh, a build that just wasn't stable. So I'm fine with it. That's what restoring is for. You back up your phone, you restore it properly. But if you don't know how to do all of that, then definitely stay away from these uh, developer and public betas because you'll end up messing up your phone. And I mean, it can be recovered, but your data may not be able to be recovered if you didn't back them up properly. So I'm looking forward to that. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, let's see if I can make something interesting tomorrow. See, whatever I put, if, uh, if you're still here, then that means you actually do watch my videos all the way through. And thank you for that because I'm trying to put out something that's more interesting. You know, I put out a video a couple of days ago that I thought was going to be nice because I put work into it. Yeah, I think I was the only one that saw it. It, it has one view right now. That hurts. But anyway... Thank you for watching. Check out some of my other stuff. It's not always about this. You know, I talk about anything I want to. That's the point of this channel. But I will see you tomorrow. Peace.